<laughs> Smell my nuts! Estinian, corrupted by the power of Nidhogg's eye, bursts into the arena with one of the coolest raid wides I've ever seen, and immediately begun to stab. Yeah, that's why he's it. I'm just gonna say it now in advance. This phase is something else. The core Bruh. mechanic of phase three is that certain. When this limit, okay, I got PTSD on limit card. Okay, when this limit card marker came out, that was the frog of the day. This has been a good day. Let's take a break. Let's come back tomorrow stronger, and let's spend the entire. F day clearing this phase yeah when i saw the limit card marker that was the first time every time i see a limit card marker that was it good job guys wrap it up good job we come back tomorrow <laughs> players will need to place towers for other members of the raid to later take but the way you do it nash and lash out and in people will be marked right with one two with a two and three with bro three. i don't remember the this fight man it takes the order in which you're going to drop towers for other members i don't remember the fight take. You can't take your own tower. Oh, you in and out. Nash and Lash is in. Oh my god, I don't remember the fight. At the same time, I don't remember the fight. So putting people in the exact right places at the exact right times consistently was a requirement. Once you take a tower, hey, it's me again, mommy. In place of it, and will shoot a massive line alien in a few seconds, targeting the closest person. Man, I look good. Took the tower or want to face this away from danger and then avoid. On top of this, Nidstinian is. Okay, guys, we need to talk something real here. Do you guys think, think I was one of the nicest looking streamer in proc? Do you guys think I look f***ing cool and awesome in proc? No? Really? You guys are so full of sh man. He's <laughs> doing cast a bar telegram in and out dodges. And sometimes... Your Zeno was cute. <laughs> ...be marked with an arrow. If it is, that means that you are not going to place a tower on your current position. I, bro, I have no f idea what this marker means we are talking about the first time right where we get nobody have any clue what the f this is how the f do we know where the tower is oh not to mention during that time there was a brazilian tower incident so it's like wait are we doing it right is it really like during that time it was a blur it was a marsh it doesn't make sense it was bullshit in the direction of your arrow instead. This added an additional foil and thing to think about as it randomly made certain numbers a lot stricter to plan out during prog. This entire mechanic is an absolute masterpiece. The timing of everything feels fast enough to be exhilarating, but just slow enough that the chaos is controlled. There's the, a decent the only one thing I have complained about this phase is that it's too forgiving. If you fuck it up, there is actually a way to continue pro. It doesn't one shot you. You can still do the other mechanic as long as you don't falter. You keep your focus. I got the damage now. It's okay. I carry on doing what I want. And then you can still continue to see the rest of the phase. I thought that was bad. They should have just killed you. If you fuck up something, the AoE should just kill. It's an fucking ultimate, man. This is not savage. If you fuck up the Dynamo Chariot, bam, you should be out. Not gone. Dead. Be shit on. You're a burden. Do better. You fuck. You know, like, I feel that that should be the case. It's an ultimate. That is the only one thing I have complained about this phase. The fact that you can still go on with the damage now. You know? A chunk of damage going out on the party, but competent healers were quickly able to optimize their damage and play perfectly. Every member of the group had to engage with this dance and had a number of possible safe spots they'd need to take. And because the boss never jumped away, it really rewarded groups that were able to build uptime strategies quickly with a more lenient enrage later down the line. Honestly, thinking back on it, this phase on the whole is definitely a contender for my favorite yeah, yeah. phase ever. Dude, the way they do the dive is so well done. It's actually, it's crazy. And also, they don't make it easy for you. Like, all three baits are the same. Like, the second bait, that shit is monka, man. I mean, the best way is to put it out there, right? I mean, some people do uptime, but it's risky as fuck, right? In an ultimate that obviously is, you know... If you're gonna do a thousand pulls, there's no reason why this strat only works eight in ten times, right? It's an ultimate. It needs to work ten out of ten times, you know what I mean? So, you know, putting the towers out there is just easier, right? Better, right? There was a weird bug that could occur that people refer to as the Brazil Tower, <laughs> but this was patched out pretty quickly, so it's not too bad. Once you deal with the entire... It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Our Gunbreaker got the Brazil Tower like almost every single time. To the point that we thought it was a controller problem. We thought it's because of his controller input. We ended up just telling him to stand still. You know what? By standing completely still until the tower appeared, it actually never bugged again. But for him, he's the only one that always get the Brazil Tower. He was a controller player. So we thought it was a controller problem. So we just tell him, just stand still. It's okay. If we don't meet the DPS check... At least we know that that's how the mechanic truly may be meant to work. You know what I mean? Four towers spawn in the intercardinals. But these are special. What is Brazilian tower? 
when you have the arrow front or back debuff, the tower still spawn the wrong direction even if you do it right. So basically, you got a tower that happened in Narnia. Because some of them have three towers inside, or four, because they're silly little guys. There will always be eight players required in these towers in total, but they will rarely be evenly split two, 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 two. Um... Popular could take this mechanic. Just make the two tank go in the middle and inbound. Don't try too hard. Grab your goddamn tether and just go to the middle and inbound for the love of God. Please stop trying to be different. Grab your sh go to the middle and inbound. How many times have I said in an ultimate fight, it's not about doing the thing right nine of ten times. If it is not ten of ten times, it's the bad strat. It must be ten in ten. Nine in ten is not good enough. Okay? Instead, players have to adjust to these random towers. Mommy, it's me again! To stop them from going boo. After this, Nidstinian clones drop to be baited, and one of the four at random will get a tank buster tether instead. Static. What the f? Why are they not invounding in the middle? What are they doing? Just go to the middle and invound, man! The boss will have a second tether, so both tanks need to grab. This static the sucks! These are some of the hardest hitting busters, relatively speaking, in the game. So oh yeah. Prepared, it could oh yeah. Really, really risky. I think this one really hits the most, the hardest. This, That's what I I have I have this joined is... friends that they say they use every single cooldown and they die. I'm like inbound then. <laughs> this hits so yeah. In fact, even if you got your whatever left mitigation you have there, you pop them all. You still need an external. If you don't have an external, that shit still kills you if you got full. Now, again, this is pro. Today, I don't know. But during pro, whatever cooldown that you have there, you press them on, it's still not enough. You still need an external. I remember. Good time for me to mention that the damage downs in DSR were truly evil. Two minutes long and cutting your overall DPS down so substantially that the best course of action, if you got one, was usually to die at the next possible I think, and no. And that's why I think it's too lenient. You should die. I know that given the damage down equal, you cannot clear the face at that point during that time on content. I get it. But still, you shouldn't let them see more mechanics. Come back again. They shouldn't let you continue. And that's why I always say, I think Ultimate has a higher difficulty. I think this development team and Yoshi P can turn on a notch. I mean, they already showed that they can. They turn on the notch at DSR and they turn on the notch at T.O.P. So they can. It's just whether they want. Because like in T.O.P, right? I say this before. You guys remember Sigma version? Sigma version, five towers far six towers near they could have made six towers near five towers far and mathematically it's doable if you go and draw lines and you connect the dots it's doable but they decided to not give you that two more pattern they already make ultimate easier already ultimate is not the hardest version this game can be there is a notch still you know I'm not kidding if a player they already turn it up already phase, right it was highly they can turn it up one more were not going to meet the dps check the checks had not been completely insane but they were definitely tight enough to demand mostly clean play from eight competent On players. content, yeah. So before phase three could be downed, everybody needed practice. Luckily by this point... Hey, mommy, it's me again! Generated. So we were on the cusp of seeing a brand new phase. One thing to notice here is that the Dragon Song War Gauge on the duty list was filling up very quickly. Where? Right now, the furthest groups were barely six minutes into the fight. Wait, what? Where? And yet this gauge is almost full. Combined with the checkpoint, could this be a new, more casual, friendly style of ultimate? Oh, People oh! Were concerned about what exactly was happening here. Was there a twist? Thank you, Reno. Out of nowhere, thoughts per second posted a clip on Twitter. You see what I mean? No offense to Sindorf, Sophia, and gang. I love TPS. I love their group. But Jesus Christ, man. You know what this feels like? This feels like the current Twitch meta. You just censor your boobs and you just stream. Like, bro, just stream, man. Just proc and stream, man. <clears throat> the group themselves were not streaming their prog, but from what little footage they had shown, they were miles ahead of the competition. A previously unseen phase? That's what they thought. And no less, what looked to be an enrage of that phase? I wonder during that time, right, where was Neverland? I don't know whether we will ever find that answer. I wonder where was Neverland at this point. How far ahead could they be? Nonetheless, we didn't have to wait long to find out. Because no hit managed to down Nidhogg shortly afterwards and make a real head... You see what I mean? You see, those little things that they try to tease you in that moment, 
it was cool at the end of the day do people care you get one moment by the entire picture no one cares is that what you want we did well guys we sh did show them a glimpse i think we can sleep well at night you know i think holy sh man i think we did it like on like a surface level right who gives a f you know what i mean again man i'm not trying to disrespect their gameplay their effort their skill or anything i'm just saying like at that point you know in this whole dragon song war story for us for the directory for the game for the viewers for the raiders what did i say at the beginning of the video that renon clip this ultimate is not just about the fight this is why this documentary even surfaced this is why he even made this video because this ultimate is more than just the fight you know before they promptly ended their stream to hide their new knowledge from the competition, Cryo followed soon after, and then we were on to phase four. You know what I like about Ultimate? Between our JP group and NA group, it felt like Echo and Liquid. Because our time zone is completely different, NA started proc at 6 a.m. We started proc at 6 p.m. So when NA finished their 16 hours proc, it's 12 midnight, you go to bed at a proper timing. When we finish our 16 hours proc, it's 12 p.m. We have to take our lunch and then sleep in the f***ing afternoon. So then we adjust our sleep schedule. So when NA wakes up at 8, we will wake up at midnight. So after day 1, we will start later. But that will make us feel better. Because let me tell you, every day sleeping at 11 a.m. was so f***ing bad. Compared to like NA sleeping at 9, 10. You know, you can still chill, watch a movie. 11 p.m. go to bed, wake up at 8. You know what I mean? For us, it's like, bro, I sleep at 11 a.m. I wake up at 9 p.m. What the f***? So it's like, we know, right? Even if we are behind the first two days, it doesn't really matter. We will come back. In U, we came back. In T, we came back. In DSR, we came back. We don't really have to go for it. We just like get our sleep schedule proper. For the viewers, it's also a good experience, right? They finish streaming, they end, we start. We end, they start. You know, like, like it's, it's so f***ing awesome, man. You know, people have like round the clock things. So it's like, it's like Echo and Liquid progging, you know? When I was watching WoW Race, I was like, okay, Liquid is done. Go to Echo. Vice versa, you know, it's such a, such a spectacle, you know? Was it the first time? <laughs> okay, clearly clueless. Okay, okay, guys, clearly don't know what the f we are doing. <laughs> clearly. Cle Clearly did not log into the private server and do your homework before you raid. Come on, man, Arthur's. Where's the raid plan? What the f is this? Where is the prep, man? You call yourself a hardcore raider and you didn't prep? What happened to the data mining? What happened to the private server? Where is the video? Did you even watch a guide? As the Dragon Song War progress gauge ticks up following Astinian's defeat, the arena shifts to the final steps of faith, the scene of the last confrontation with Nidhogg at the end of the original main scenario quests. Alphano runs in from the south of the arena to assist his friend Astinian, who is bound and broken between the eyes of Nidhogg. He begs us to finish him, and in response, the ghost of Harshafan we should have finished him. the soul of friendship buff. At the same time, Alphano pulses the soul of devotion you see, around him. Let me tell you, Harshafan, right? just like Astinian was an irrelevant NPC. These two characters were written as a support side irrelevant NPC that eventually turned out to be number one fan favorite and number two a giga chair. This NPC is just a random dragoon quest giver. This guy is insignificant. This guy didn't even show his face. He's literally no one cares who asked, you know? And here he is now in every trailer looking, looking chat as fuck, you know? The eyes grow, surging with power, and the phase begins. These two buffs are a requirement to be able to deal damage to the eyes. Each buff corresponds to one of the eyes, and possessing the buff means that you can hit them. This was the first point of contention <coughs> between groups. It was totally possible to stack both buffs together. But was this yeah, point? man. Yo, we didn't even think about that, man. I mean, not just us, right? A lot of groups is like, okay, group A do... The left buff, group B do the right buff. Group A will always fight red eye. Group 2 will always fight blue eye. Yay! Easy mechanic solve. Wait, hold up. Wait, what? You need to swap? <laughs> With this bite groups in the butt later down the road, why is it that there are two separate buffs obtained in two separate ways? 
Thanks to the puzzle elements that Ultimates have traditionally introduced, it was definitely within the realm of possibility that the correct play was to split the buffs to avoid some yeah. unseen failure state later. For the sake of Never thought about it, right? Most groups opted to take the risk and stack the buffs together, allowing them to double dot and cleave both eyes, making See? Yet again, Ultimate has a way to make it harder. They could have made it like that. They could have made it like you can only take one buff. You do damage, 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 damage. And then suddenly you need to swap the buffs. Could they have done it? Could they have made it more difficult? They can. That's why I think ultimate is not the hardest mechanic yet. This game has to offer. But they can make this game harder. I just don't think the player base are ready for it yet. You know? Yes, check much, much easier. So let's break down how this phase actually works. The red eye will tether four players with red chains. And the blue eye will tether four players with blue chains. Players that take damage while linked to the red chain will deal a chunk of damage to the red eye. Whereas when players with the blue chain take damage, they heal the blue eye. You can trade tethers with another person by standing on top of them for a second or so. So the goal of this phase is to create a setup which has the players about to be hit with the red chain and avoid taking damage as a blue chain. Three orbs spawn around each eye. It's me again! Orb and two blue orbs. Yellow orbs should be popped by two players, and blues by one. After a period of time, the blue orbs would grow, and if you left them too long after that point, they would explode. Shoot, I don't fucking remember this everyone. fight. Growing an orb would make them deal more damage to whoever popped them. And if you consider how the chains work, it's pretty easy to see why that may be a good thing. I don't so even remember this fight. Orbs, trade the chains, and then pop the four blue orbs, chunking the red eye. Next... Players with a red chain will be dived in sets of two by Mirage dives from Nidstinian clothes. Oh, wow. We were doing 50-50 steel during that time. I remember I have to run across that to pass chain. I remember that. Yeah, this was a prox strat. Yeah, you see? We have to call out who we're swapping with. So if you take two in a row, you die. Yeah, you this see, we are still doing 4-4. Four four. For eight dives. We were still row. splitting during so that time. Goal, is simply to trade tethers between dives to make sure that nobody with a Volna possesses a red die. The eyes are then going to cast Steep Enrage, and this acts as a pseudo enrage for the phase because each eye does this attack individually. So if both happen to be alive at this point, they're both going to cast the heavy hitting raid wides, and taking two of them at once was very close to unsurvivable. The eyes phase. All this explanation that Reno just gave. My wife would never understand a single word. To be fair, I wasn't even listening. <laughs> this was deceptive because the difficulty in the ice phase was not in solving the mechanics or even in executing them. On this the is whole, like this, this is like how the architect was explaining to Neo what the matrix is, you know? Easiest phase to execute in the encounter so far, aside from the pre-checkpoint door boss. The biggest issue with the ice phase is that they had a relatively tight DPS check that required clean play and no accidental friendly fire. Damn wife for catching strays. And the groups were just getting deep enough into the... Yesterday, I told my wife, before you do go best normal, go and find a guide. And I was like, who the f*** would make a guide for normal? And then uh, I googled, holy f***, someone make a guide for go best normal. And then I gave my wife the link, my wife watched it, and it helped her. I'm like, wow. God bless the people that make the normal guide. It actually works for new players. She went into it. I watched it. She, I mean, obviously she didn't get everything right the first time. But she immediately can feel like, oh, you know? I'm like, oh, shit, man. Maybe I should have told her to watch a guide earlier. Full victim Maybe I need to start making death. guides. The hardest part of progging you know? eyes was seeing eyes. And this was where groups had to really focus on building their consistency. A new goal became not only progging and killing eyes, but bringing Limit Break 3 over from the previous phase without using it. This would free up a melee or ranged LB3 if needed to lessen the strain of the eyes in rage, or even to keep further into the fight. Who would have th leading groups were approached? Who would have thought you have to have LB3? Holy f during content, this is one of the most I would say the hardest DPS check they ever put into the game. Now, when I I don't mean like specific phase, I mean like the entire fight from Thorin onwards until the end of Thorin. DPS check on the first minute to the last matters. Every phase you have to pull resources. You must have some sort of as much gauge as possible, as much proc save up as possible going in. If you don't, 
you are not going to make that 1%. And then during that time, I remember the first time we got three, we used Master LB. At that point, I was like, how the f are we going to do more damage? It's insane. Watching the eyes in rage, once again, the TPS Twitter reared its head, posting this clip without context. Like, why bother posting it, man? What did I get from that? <laughs> like, what the f you want the likes and retweet, right? Show one second going into the time loop, you know? Show us the loop, right? That would have been blown people's mind, right? <sighs> the clock rolling back? What could this mean? They had clearly gotten past eyes and seen something new. And soon enough, Cryo would become the first stream group to see exactly... Oh, were we the first stream group? This was where the Wait, race were we? evolved from good. Too incredible. Oh, yeah. oh, it's me. Guys, remember, go to my Discord, buy your gear, 1 million for weapon, 500k for material. Okay, guys, you can be part of the race. Join our Discord today. Sign up, exclamation mark, DSR. Uh, be part of the race. Man, this was a, this was a moment. <laughs> Yo, look at Twitch chat. Twitch chat went f***ing crazy. Holy f***. Look at Twitch chat. I can't even read that. That was insane. Oh my god. That was a moment. This was a moment. Look at the play safe. Look at that. Nothing left to chance. Nothing left to chance. <laughs> when you successfully defeat phase four and play out the full Oh my god. I cannot believe they f***ing loop this sh man. <laughs> Look at Dude, that was real. Dude, that is an emote. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I really cannot believe it. What the f*** is this? Is this a troll? Oh my god, dude. DSR was so f***ing good, man. Dude, these are moments, man. These are, mo these are moments we went through together. I appreciate it, really, guys. If you were there when we were progging this, I want you guys to know, man. You guys are part of the memory, man. You guys are part of this. It was a moment that we bonded. It was as if spiritually my pinky touched yours in this timeline, you know? I feel, I can, I can almost feel it, you know? <laughs> That's right. When you successfully defeat Phase 4 and play out the full Dragon Song War the way it happened, the clock rolls back and you find yourself. I didn't even know this means the, the clock rolls back. Fight. It the looks like the clock fast forward. Is protecting you. At the end of Phase 1, you must play out events again just the way they happened. Yo, we try a lot of things here. Fall, actually, defeating Sir Charibur and phasing back into Thorden. It was a time loop. This was mind blowing. In the second loop, everything was the it exact was. same as the first. It was mind blowing. You didn't have some extra buff. This is the there most no mind blowing. Mechanics, nothing. This is the you most mind blowing moment, I think. Failed again. What on earth was going on here? What were you supposed to do? Wait, do I really look younger? Dude, it's the same shirt! Wait, 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 wait. Same guy, right? Same guy, right? Same shirt. I swear I did not watch this video and purposely wear this just for nostalgia. This is fate. This is almost as if time went back too. Oh my god. Witness rewind for themselves? It was time to figure this out. There were a few things here of note that became the four running theories and groups essentially had to pick their poison as to which one they tried first. Yeah. The first up was completing a second loop let me tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you, when we proc at that point, we tell yourself, without ourselves here, we f***ing go again. That was a moment during tea that we knew that we f***ed up. We f***ed up by having to be the one that tests the true heart. We were 
14 hours in during tea and then we got to the point where we like Sh we need to find the true heart and then we spent six hours reprogging we did things like going back to phase one kill both living liquid and the hand at the same time and then after that we kill brute justice and cruise chaser at the same time in the last phase you know when brute justice was doing tornado and then cruise chaser were casting the eternal darkness we kill them at the same time that's how much we test to know where to get the enema codex you know we spent four hours wasting prop just to test we were the only group that time i mean i guess one ace was also doing testing during that time move was sleeping move was only raining 12 hours that day because they have someone that has an examination they went to bed they didn't need to test anything we are here grinding four six more hours to find out where the f to get the true art. and then we wasted every possibility and then the one last thing we didn't try that was the thing that we tried to try, but it was 18 hours in. We tell ourselves, let's go to bed. And then move, try that thing, the first thing, and then they got it. That was the part where they leapfrog. So when we got to this Hoshi Fong phase, I'm like, here we go again. Luckily, thank God for FF Locks. I don't know whether it was Renon or Rin that they FF Locks and they found that if you give LB when he was running, Hoshi Fong gained a buff that let him take less damage and let him be able to heal. Then I was like, oh, shit, there it is. Thank you. Luckily, that didn't take long. Luckily, it's not that the true heart, man. The true heart was a little bit. Yeah, the true heart take way too long to figure out. This one did not take more than three to four hours before people figure it out. So thank God. In its entirety. Honestly, this one I think was pretty Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So we waited until the bot the last thing that most of someone finally did it. Trying, because then it they just tried. seems so <laughs> unlikely. From a design standpoint, doing the same fight twice would make no sense at all. With misaligned cooldowns, it became crushingly hard to consistently meet. We did, by the way. We got all the way to phase 3 via the loop. And we were like, guys, this is why. <laughs> I don't think so. No. We need to go back to the drawing board, you know. And honestly, the other options... I mean, the only difference that we got LB3, right? seemed stronger. The second was splitting the buffs in eyes. Yeah, this you see? All of us try a lot of, of things. Cook, kind of unrelated. You see? But no group had successfully... You see? But this time in DSR, it was different. There were so many groups that were so close that we have... It was a community-driven prog. It almost felt like so many groups were trying so many different things, you know? And also, it didn't last that long. So thankfully, it didn't like, you know, break the momentum of this whole fight, you know? Manage this yet. So it was definitely a of the prog. You don't break the momentum of the prog. Could rely on if the because let me tell you, T broke the momentum of the prog for us, at least. Going to fake Calibration Alpha and then spend the next six hours on unknown where the f is the true heart is it in living liquid it should be right because the hands don't die right hmm hmm do we need to kill the two in together hmm you know what i mean most likely scenario failed miserably thirdly before i explain i want to take you back to phase one for a second to look at something you see the limit break bar here there are only two gauges which is usually reserved for light party content. Yeah, right. Was it's also the first time they do that, yeah. Why did you only receive it when That was the first thing everybody uh, immediately found out. That this LB gauge. a few times as a little quirk or point of interest by a few groups so far, and even in Twitch chats. But it had been pretty irrelevant, so it was kind of... You know why it was irrelevant? Because it was Twitch chat. I completely agree with Renon here. Because it's Twitch chat, is irrelevant. Twitch chat just throw random on the wall and obviously one of them gonna stick right why listen to twitch chat yeah nah we're not gonna listen to twitch chat i've ignored there was no point paying no. too much attention exactly to it. but now now it was suddenly incredibly important because after rewind you get pulled back into this phase but with access to a possible lb3 something completely unobtainable before this had to be it but yeah. before it was even possible to trial Groups you have to play perfectly. The previous phase yeah. in order to bring across yeah. LB3 to rewind. See, that is why this fight is so well designed. This is something Blizzard can never do. Now, it's not Blizzard's fault. It's not Blizzard's fault that Blizzard can never do something like that. They have 20 men raid. They have 19 f***ing classes. 10,000 10, specs. And then you got talent tree. You got borrowed power. You got RNG gear. I don't think they can ever balance. That's why, again, again, big credit, big shout out to the Final Fantasy XIV development team. They freaking designed Ultimate Fights so perfect, man. It was flawless, really. It is insane. Best content any developer have ever made for an MMO, I think. During proc so far, it was commonly done to use LB3 to kill either Nidhogg or Eyes. But in order to test either of these theories, both yeah. of those phases had to be down Perfect. cleanly yeah. without the use of limit break as a crutch. On the rare pull that a group managed to get far enough to test, they did so. 
One by one. Yeah. Melee LB could kill the boss fast. We, we use melee LB. We use melee LB. We use Hula LB. Allowing them to help Harshavon. But it failed. It did not release you from the jail. Healer LB could be used to revive him after he fell in battle, right? Surely Tank LB would protect him from the damage, right? There had to be more to it. Back and forth, the viewers went between yeah. streams, waiting for another tantalizing rewind pull to test a new theory. Kryle tested the heal LB yeah, it didn't and work. found that it did not res Harshavon, rendering that option a complete no-go. Kirana's Tivoli tested the tank LB, waiting until he was targetable in the hopes of... See, that was the Jabin. Redoubt. FF locks, people actually wouldn't know. That was kind of crazy if you actually think about it. Because people try LB, you know what I mean? Reducing his incoming damage for as long as possible. And it actually worked. Yeah. Better yet, it continued mitigating damage on him even mm -hmm. after the limit break 3 had worn off. But it still wasn't enough. Yeah. He still died. What was discovered through much trial and error and looking through footage between the four running groups was that if you press the tank LB forward to using it before Harshafon's HP bar appeared, yeah. he was actually targetable by limit You see, it's so in unintuitive. Giving NPC a buff, the LB3 was never number one done before, test before, and number two, it's not how the game's been working for the last eight years at this point. HP bar happened, things can be used. HP bar appear, we can target, right? So suddenly need to LB before that. It's like, it's so counterintuitive, you know? The entire time, you would remove the debuff on him that prevented him from being healed. Yeah, this is FF loss. This would mean that he had both the damage mitigation. I like how Renon specifically excluded that part. FF locks is the reason why. ...for the entire phase from Tank LB, and he was able to be healed by the healers, and the damage on him from the spear became much, much more manageable. Now the game had changed. Now you could save him. Now the race was on. Once you managed to defeat Sir Cherry Bear, wait, are we also the first one to save him? Well, keeping we we should get a title in this game, man. The first savior. Oh no, we are not. I mean, it's on stream, right? The first visible savior. Your boy alive. The spear slowly take. Yo, a uh, red storm pop context for the two hundred bits. Uh, during that time, obviously, I did not see that at that time. It's a little bit too late. I'm not sure you are still watching. Thanks for the two hundred bits, man. His life became targetable, and it was a race against the enraged to defeat it before it defeated him. And the first group to save him on stream, with almost 100,000 viewers in the Final Fantasy 14 category. Oh, sh wait, really? I had a hundred thousand viewers during that time, eagerly watching the race. Cryo. Oh, the entire directory. Okay, never mind. Our standard, the moment we get spread, everybody spread the Oprodian position. Man, this is so cool. Upon saving him, the timeline splits, the Dragon Song War Gauge resets back to zero, and you're thrown into an entirely new setting. Crazy, right? They actually like created a new Dragon War song. So that was the timeline where Harden didn't get stopped, and then he managed to control the dragons, right? Things have gone Interesting. so very wrong. King Thorden is more powerful than ever, having obtained power over the dragons. Yeah, and now such a good net. Such a like, like, it's so crazy to have an alternate narrative in a fight like this, you know? It, that's crazy, really. ...to bear against you. Now, we had to see the consequences of our actions. We had to see how we'd pay for rewriting history in such a callous manner. This phase opened with a few so good, simple auto-attack cleaves, before jumping right into the wrath of the heavens. And as soon as Thordon leapt away, it became clear that he just really likes trios, <laughs> because this was a second trio phase. Two knights leap down and target one player apiece with a tether. Come on, man. He paid a lot of money. He bought a lot of cosmetic. He trained them, get them the weapons that they need. This is a static, okay? The leader can't be the one doing them all, right? These motherfuckers, these leeches have to do something, right? Of course, right? Come on in, dude, guys. Come on. We are the a dragon team. dragon jumps down as well and stares menacingly in between them. <clears throat> One player will also receive a blue marker on their head, the exact same one you've seen earlier in the fight, all the way back in phase two. As a quick reminder, 
it means? Such a good... Uh, like, like I tell my wife this so many times. Final Fantasy XIV, right, always shows you a glimpse. Shows you one step. Shows you one step. Shows you one step. Now three steps comes together. And then for Ultimate, it's like they show you two steps. Four steps comes together. They just but dial it up, you know? Miles away from everyone else. But the design the is always that consistent, right, right, you know? Shortly, in line with those tethers. And the dives are here. Now, the twister here definitely worked differently. Huge. On top of that, you have twisters. Wait, wait, with twisters? Yukop twisters? Yeah, yeah, the Yukop twisters are bad. Yeah. Except this time they decided yeah. to mess with every single experience. That is weird. By giving them a slightly different snapshot timing than they've ever had before. Meaning that all your muscle memory built up from five years of Yukop mm. players for friends. It was weird. Worthless. Spread the group along one side of the room. Let the blue guy stand alone in his blue guy corner. Stretch and bait their dives, leaving space for everybody else, and dodge the twisters. As all this is happening, two random players will get thunder marks. Oh my god, that was clean. One will get a green marker traditionally... Okay, this mechanic for ninja is way too easy. This mechanic for ninja is almost unfair. This is the easiest trio i ever done in my life. Too shukuchi, too easy. Reserved for dive bomb-like mechanics. And you need to start paying attention to the knight standing menacingly in the arena. Know that there's a caster and a warrior. Thordon will use his invisible line AoE, Ascalon's Mercy, from phase two. The dive bomb will lock in, so place it away from any future safe spot that you may want to have. One player will get five fireball puddles that they need to bait, and another will get four large pyre AoE. Again, remember what I said earlier? They already made ultimate easier. This mother could have done a chariot these are small little things when you think back are things they could make the fight harder they could fuck with your mind a little bit they can give you that 50 percent doubt a 50 50 chance that you might or might not remember they could have make it again small change you know small little things they can add in they can actually just dial it up this version the current two ultimates that we get are already merciful already it can be harder. The thunders will explode for a small AoE around themselves, paralyzing any accidental target that they somehow manage to hit. They can also do a stack here rather than a spread. You know what I mean? They can also do a stack here instead. After you do all these things, not hard, obviously. Just a stack, just a spread. Stack the stack, spread the spread, right? But then another thing that can make you think. After already thinking so much, you know? And the warrior will with do a you, massive you know? donut-shaped attack, meaning that close to him in a small circle is the only safe spot left in the room. And yeah, this all goes off at pretty much the exact same time. For one of the only times in this whole video, I'm actually happy to say that this mechanic is easier than it looks. Yeah. It has a lot of moving parts, that's very true. This is the only phase in the fight they forgive. If you fuck up this mechanic, fine, raise up, devil to heaven, no bullshit. One shot you, you fuck up, one shot you. There's no like damage down, fuck it up, one shot. It's okay, five people die, Red Mage is alive, race everybody, you can you can still learn the next way. This is the most forgiving, the only forgiving part of the fight. But all the components and mechanics that you've seen before, and they- Again, again, they already make DSR easier already. DSR could be harder, P could be harder, POP could be harder. We are already at the mercy of the developers already, you know? Overall, for the most part, what you see is what you get. If you deal with each of these individual components, you will get the win. By this stage, around 10 minutes into the encounter, groups have become more accustomed to the randomized nature of most of the mechanics, and the fact that role-based responsibilities had for the most part been thrown out of the window in favor of more randomness in this encounter, without too much struggle, this mechanic also fell. One mildly scary tank buster later, Death of the Heavens begun to cast. I'm gonna spoil it right here. You f think Death of the Heaven is easy. Today, Death of the Heaven is easy. Fully soft, big brain, easy strat. Death of the Heaven is easy. This phase, during the part where we were progging. Wait, what? Hold up. What the f is this? You are telling me Zeno couldn't set up weak aura in WoW. And he set this up that I never even seen before in Final Fantasy XIV. This is the buff tracker. But this is the big one. This was more like death of everybody's prog for at least a day because it was a yeah. wall and a half. It was hard. When the this one was hard. The arena, First time hard. By this complete mess but today, I actually think that this is the one ultimate mechanic that went from the hardest prog mechanic into the easiest reclaim mechanic. This one has the widest, highest difficulty, lowest difficulty line.
For sure. Hardest in proc, easiest in reclear. Nights around and inside the arena, and it can be overwhelming to figure out what you're even looking at, let alone yep. how you're supposed to deal with it. Before I explain this earthquake, I think it's good to mention that one early solution that some the earthquake to try here is blocking the spear from one of the knights. I'm honestly not too sure why they were going for that because it seemed fairly obvious that it wasn't the right play, but this was one of the earliest attempted solutions. So what happens here? Four random players get Doom, meaning that unless they are cleansed in some way, they're going to go splat when the Doom timer hits zero. Thordon, multiple dragons and knights spawn around the edge of the arena, and the warrior knight spawns inside it and begins channeling the same battle Oof. that he used. Oof. I suddenly got flashback when I saw this first PlayStation Theater the first time. During Death of the Heaven, when I saw this first, like you go through that sh and you saw this PlayStation Theater. Yo, time to go to bed, man. <laughs> Guys, good proc today. <laughs> Let's come back tomorrow, fresh up. Is <laughs> in phase two. If you look at the target bar at this point, you're probably gonna gulp in fear, twisting dive, cauterize, wings of salvation, spear of the fury, lightning storm. Heavy impact. All of this is going off pretty much in. Is he gonna clip my Shukuchi? He has to clip my Shukuchi. If you're gonna feature me so much in this video, you better f***ing clip that Shukuchi. I swear to God. He better put it in. Sync with one another. And the first time pretty much every group got there, they instantly. He has it. to. How are you supposed to develop a strategy for this when you couldn't even see what was going on because it was such a mess? Upon a lot of footage review and further testing, it was clear that most of this was just fluff, supposed to distract you away from what actually mattered. Twisting Dive was relevant because it signified Twisters dropping, and Lightning Storm was relevant too, as it hit each player and required them to spread. Heavy Impact was the ballast, so you could just watch the pulsing AoE and dodge, and the rest just reduced the safe floor space. So what you wanted to do was to... You see, sometimes when you do mechanic like that, like, like what Renon explained, right? When you figure out mechanic like that, you know that where is your area of play. The tighter it is, the better. The lesser space there are, the better. Because you know these are the only space you can feed people in, which then makes it easier to just come up with where to stand. These are some ways that you clear the space. The more crazy, the better. The more crazy, the better. The smaller, the safe spot is, the better. Because you know exactly where you're looking at, you know? Yo, you like this twist? The dodge. The non -doom ah! You guys like that? Six small safe Look at that. Before being presented with another issue. Look at that. You guys like that? What an amazing dodge. We did it. We did it this way, by the way. You that earthquake. Puddles. But don't worry. It gets worse. PlayStation is back, and he is joined by his ugly younger brother, Dragon's Eye, and the gay is Dude, reborn. this PlayStation Theater, this is the hardest proc, I think. Proc, right? Proc. I'm not saying the mechanic. This was the hardest proc in this fight, I think. And the players explode. This is literally the mechanic from Phase 1, but with two lookaways added on top, and the requirement Oof. to have the... Look at that. Look at that. Look at the earthquake claiming how many lives. You could cleanse. After all of this, there's a Meteor DPS check in order to ensure that you got through this mechanic mostly cleanly. So you had to get it right. This mechanic was hard. For those of you that are doing DSR today, it was a different experience. Because there was little to no knowledge of baitable markers and no advanced strategies based on them. Holy the shit, man, dude. And then the Meteors. This was the moment you knew. You cannot just get by anymore. The moment you saw this Meteor, you knew. You are not seeing the next phase. Even if you do the PlayStation Theta half ass, people die. People didn't get knocked in. Didn't people cleanse their death, whatever. But the moment you saw this Meteor, you knew. No more progression today. <laughs> no more new footage today. Full of hours. The best attempts were the product of pure adjusting around the other seven people and trying to make some magic happen. Over time, this developed into strategies as groups learned one another's tendencies and added. You know, you know, you know what is crazy? As a raider in this game, that we are able to solve this is insane. We are not normal, man. All of us are called progress, early progress. We are not normal. I don't know which is worse. The fact that we are not normal or the developers can make mechanics like this. Think about it, it's scary. It's scary how, as a human, if we are put in the situation that we have to learn, we will learn. If we are forced to adapt, we have to we will adapt. Yeah. That's actually really scary. To slowly add structure into the chaos. Getting the right people to the right oh, 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 oh. to drop puddles were a major pain point. 
And once that was overcome, that doesn't look right. Oh, that works. Once the added confusion of the dooms needed nice. to certain places fell almost insane. Again, prostrat, right? Prostrat. After many, many hours of trial and error, breakthroughs were made. Come on, you have to give me the Shukuchi. With a high level of consistency at getting players far into the mechanics. Come on, where's my Shukuchi? Look at the dodge. Look at the dodge. Resolved the previous part partially successfully. surpassed them. What a nice dodge. I am proud of that dodge. You know why? That is original. This is how you knew this is a proc strat. This is how you knew we had the brain power to do something different for that. Oh my god. So that is beautiful. Resolved the previous Oof. part partially successful. Oof. Kiranas Tivoli surpassed them. Ray's cheesing through the meteor enrage and seeing the true enrage of the entire phase shortly afterwards, with a handful of players alive to boot. <laughs> it felt like almost every single foreign group was at the exact same point, trading good pulls between each other. And one by one, they begun to break the wall. I want to go to Daddy's Orange Dragon Dungeon. <laughs> this was a great moment for Twitch chat, honestly, and I think it needs a little bit of a mention here. Viewers would hop between streams to whomever was having the best pull going at the time, showering the chat with people arrives whenever prog point was reached. And people see, leaving. see, I wish I could experience that. Now that I experienced all this hardcore prog, right? At one point, I want to experience being a viewer. F*** it, I want to be like a caster. I want to help Frosty. I want to be sitting there watching this hype. I want to be the guy that get my mind blown watching, but not playing. Now, obviously, ultimate, I still want to prog, but like, you know, let's just say Savage. I don't give a fuck about Savage anymore, right? Savage, to me, has regulator to meet core content right F it man like for savage i would love to watch you know savage does have things that blows your mind to you i think i kind of want to sit there and watch it and like what the fuck you know what i mean the yeah i want to see it to one day streams as they arrive like baldo wick to village burned banana peeled and i mean it when i say this Twitch chat made this experience 10 times more enjoyable. Yes. Being cheered on by so many different people, different stream chats collectively coming together to hop between POVs and support each of the four running groups. It was a unique... This DSR is nothing without all the people that watch. In before you say this is a content only for 3%, 1% of the population. No, this content is for the biggest that we never seen before. Battle, content, enjoy us. They don't do it, they watch. Even better, their static is not scheduling a day to do it yet. Until people clear, good, they watch. Ultimate is the most involving event for every single raider. Casual, hardcore, me call people who don't even do it. It's for everybody. People don't understand, man. People don't understand. Yeah, this is more. Again, I say this again. This is more than just a fight. This is a event. This is like a watch party. You know what I mean? This is like a show. You know? Atmosphere that is pretty much impossible to recreate. Yeah. Following I mean, I mean, I think TOP maintained it, right? I do think that DSR is so high also because of the injection of the WoW players, obviously, and also it's new, 6.1, right? A lot of WoW players, still a lot of new players, and then going to 6.3 maybe, you know, half of them go back to WoW already, half of them move on already, COVID end already and stuff, you know? I do think TOP is also pretty successful, but for all the circumstances, including like the delay, the anticipation, this one is the best. I am gonna say this ultimate hold the most special place in our heart. I've never seen so many grow as men cry clearing this content i feel like this is the ultimate that truly tests us like emotionally and mentally i'm very disappointed there was no shukuchi my shukuchi wasn't featured okay. <laughs> Damage. Another spooky, scary tank bus. Yo, Robo, thanks for the resub. Thank you, thank you. At this point, if you had the DPS, you could kill him. But there was a catch. Once he reached 2%, he would stop his enrage, drop to the floor, and begin begging for mercy. Did people ever kill him here and get past Double Dragon just to see what it is? Because I've never seen it. This what happens? Very odd. Actually, this never happened before. And Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, it go back to eyes. Spot for old men in armor. So the majority. So he loops again. Groups getting to this point was yeah. Let's see what happens. And it was clearly some kind of success state because Thornton had a special animation, oh. additional dialogue. He would escape, leaping away, calling you too kind. Look of at the ninja. Look at the piece of. Last, 
the transition Look at a ninja. phase six happened. 